Hello and welcome to today's video. This time we'll be having a look through my purchases of vintage paperbacks and related items for the month of May 2024 into early June. So sit back, relax, and let's take a look. Okay then, so as it stands right now, as I film this, and it will be done in several parts, my actual vintage pickups for the month of May thankfully are not too bad i have got potentially a couple of incredible collections on the horizon which i might be buying en masse but for now we'll just look through the bits and pieces that i have got and uh well first of all this one and it, this is going to be a book haul in many cases of upgrades so book haul of upgrades and uh, this one is on uh, vietnam now i have already got this this one it's a special penguin special 255 it's in an unusual format as you can see it's this sort of square one and i was particularly looking for quite a nice copy of this one and this was nice condition and also um it was only a fiver so i thought i did very well on that um so what we'll do i'll grab my brush because this one of course is uh a, uh, a one-off size wise so i'm just going to give this one the brush right now and um, we will have some polishing to do but apart from that this one's absolutely fine so i'll leave all the polishing to the end but that one because it's a little bit out of uh, shape we shall uh, just pop that over there for now now we've got a nice wedge of penguin books this time so vintage penguins so i'll pull out the first wedge here now and um the majority of these, not quite all of them, but the majority of them um, came from the Penguin Champ. So I wrote to Drew um, and said, look, Drew, I, although you've not got anything you know, per se that I was actually uh, after from his current like stock drops and what have you, um, there was quite a bit I wanted him to check out um, of upgrades. So these are later books, books that I already have, but my copy, since I've been going through them on my other channel, um, it does... I've highlighted them as ones that I'd like to get better copies of because the the, the I've got, you know, I've got this one, but it's just not in great shape. So Drew was able to do me a deal to buy, you know, a good old way. I think I've got 26 of him. And these are all better copies than mine, which are in particularly bad shape. So I thought, well, that would take the opportunity since I hadn't bought a lot of other books this month so far. Um, take the opportunity to uh, to do some upgrades, which is always a nice thing to do so 26 books are going to be pulled out from my main collection and uh, replaced with these new editions which is excellent news i said predominantly they're slightly later ones there's not a lot in the way of vintage penguin here they are later editions but that's absolutely fine the main thing is that we've got some new books some new penguins and some really nice upgrades. So uh, yeah, good to have these. So we'll just go through them in the normal way. I said, I know for a fact that mine are all really rough, so I'm not gonna be going far wrong with these. And uh, Drew did send me pictures of them all beforehand, so I knew what I was getting. And it's amazing, the longer you're a collector, the more your standards seem to like get higher and higher, which is good and also bad because um, it does mean you become more and more fussy as time goes along, which probably isn't a bad thing, but it does perhaps sometimes put you off buying certain books, you know, so it's a double-edged sword, you know, you do get a better collection, but you also end up uh, turning a few down, you know, so... That's just how it goes. I'm pleased to get a, a replacement of this one. I do actually like Patrick Lee Fermer as an author. Um, he had a few published in Penguin and this was an, a really nice one to get upgraded. To be honest, these later penguins, you know, post 1000, none of them are particularly rare. Um, the crime ones is certainly more sought after and uh, even more so by certain authors. But um, generally speaking, you know, they all had reasonable print runs and uh, 
they are out there. So sometimes patients can pay off. So I have been, you know, when I started collecting penguins, which is admittedly decades ago, I would pretty much pick them up in any condition, really. But um, over time, I've just got, um, I said, more and more picky. And um, as I've been going through my collection, doing, you know, sort of upgrading like a hundred or cleaning rather, a hundred books at a time, certain ones have just stuck out as being, you know, quite the worst for wear. So that's why um, it's uh, quite nice to uh, upgrade them as we go along. I am also looking for some summer reading. I've got a couple of little short breaks away and I may well take that one on with, or my old copy, since it's a, um, now I've got a spare of it. I might take it along with me to uh, um, have a read. Um, at PG Woodhouse as well. I'm not a massive fan of Woodhouse from this period where they got these little little illustrations on the front. I, I just don't like them. Um, but I do like PG Woodhouse. The content's great. Um, but I prefer the more elegant ones of the uh, the early 1950s um, that Penguin put out. An old biography here. This is, uh, what's it, number 680. So generally speaking, the Penguin books from, what's it, no note in there, the Penguin books from um, 500 upwards are generally not that sought after. There's a few, obviously, better ones, a few, you know, odd authors that you might want to uh, pick out. And as I said, the crime is always sought after in its own right, really. But, you know, none of them are difficult to get at all, really. They're all sort of online if you want them. But when I do this sort of exercise, I like to buy in bulk, really. And uh, when I buy collections, I like to buy boxes and boxes and then spend my time going through them bit by bit, you know. So, what was this? Peter Pryor in the Oval, Somerset. Okay. Little postcard. Happy New Year. I have delayed my reply to you in the hope that uh, there'll be some concrete oration news. WSC, thanks, but can't. Because almost in code. Okay, Manchester, very pleasant, although enormously drafty. Ah, well, quite an interesting little uh, little postcard from Michael there. Race begins today. I shall be returning in a week's time. Hmm, quite a nice little unusual bit of related memorabilia, which I shall put in my insertions box. I won't keep it with that book, but I'll pop it in my insertions box. Heads You Lose, yeah, Christina Brand. So once again, I know for a fact that my copy of this is really very much the worst for wear. So uh, even though this is an A1, it's definitely um, a big improver on my own one. Um, there we go. The Hollow Man. Nothing to do with the Paul Verhoeven film, of course. a crime here. We do have some books other than Penguin to do today, but uh, at the moment I've got a little wedge of Penguin to do. I said a fair few of these all came from the uh, the Penguin chap, um, but some did not. Uh, so I went on to my local bookshop in town and he's currently having a, a paperback sale. So the upstairs of the shop is all paperbacks basically. And he was having a sale where uh, the books were... Uh, three three paperbacks for a fiver and you don't mind that sort of price do you really because you can find some good stuff in there um and i i went in about a month ago and picked up quite a bit and i was down there with some friends for lunch and um 
I found some more. So I had a little bit of time and then I ran out of time, which was like, oh, God, yeah. So you just can't win sometimes, can you? But there we are. That's all right. The golden box. Let's slide them around there. The case of the black eyed blonde. Yeah, when I've been going through these, I've noticed that some of my Earl Stanley gardeners have obviously come through the well-read second-hand market and um, are looking, we're looking quite the worst for wear. So it is really nice to get these uh, improvers to the old collection. Deadly Weapon, Wade Miller. Stubborn first page here. It's not looking, wanting to open. Sometimes that can signify that it's, there's like the remnants of a sticker or something, which is stopping it. But this one's okay. It was just being a bit hard, playing hard to get. I always like to take out the pencil prices if I can. Nice to be upgrading some of these, that's for certain. 977. This so has got a little bit of spiral. But still, generally speaking, he's okay. He's got a tiny uh, split of the spine, which has been repaired, but he's still all right. And Maygrade Travel South, a Simonon. Of course, these. Simonons have sort of been superseded now with modern translations, but they are period and they are part of the uh, the main penguin series. A couple of non penguins now, these didn't come from Drew, these are from the bookshop on uh, my local bookshops. This is a new English library, Captain Blossom Soldiers On. I was not aware of this series whatsoever, but it was such a funky like cover. And, um, you know, New English Library as a publisher is one that I've started to have my eyes peeled for because they're highly collectible. Uh, this was a first, 1976. Yeah, there was an original Captain Blossom book. This one is interesting because it's got that ridge in there, which means it's been remaindered. Quite dusty as well. But apart from that, it's quite a nice, robust copy. And that's difficult to say with um, New English Library. Uh, this is also from my local shop. And this is an early cherry tree. Look at this. Very, very thin. I've got some cherry tree books. Um, I think this is what they would class as the thriller. Now, there's a cross on the top there. I don't know if it's in pen or pencil. I'm just giving it a gentle try. Yeah, it looks like it was in pencil. But the name next to it was definitely ink. And even that pencil's a little bit the harder to get. So I'm just going to leave it. These are scarce, as you can imagine, because these are wartime. Printed under paper rationing. I'm not sure it's even dated. No, it's not. But you can imagine this came out um, sort of 1941. 1942, something like that, maybe 43. It's scarce. And, you know, when it was three for five pounds, I was very, very reluctant to leave it behind. I've got a few cherry tree books, I'm not in the greatest of shape, I have to say. Um, I don't think the quality of their production was anything like as good as some of the other um, publishers of the period. But this was a rare one. So, uh, it was too good to leave behind, really. So I shall, uh, when I get my cherry tree books out, I shall give that one um, uh, a bag, I think, to protect it, because it's quite, quite, quite scarce. Um, right, I need to make a bit of room here. Okay, so this is uh, a picador. I've got um, a couple of picadors today. This one actually isn't a first printing, but it is, I believe, quite a scarce one. And um, it was part of the uh, three for five pounds. So, uh, it was a bit too good to turn 
turned down really. I didn't want to leave this behind, you know. So it's a four dash your hand. It's um I said a big, big, huge book. So when Picador published these big omnibuses, and there's a few of them, um, they generally don't turn up in nice condition. Um, so that for the money was was a good price, I thought. Um, I also picked up um he had a whole shelf full of Virago modern classics, and I was a bit shocked to find them all because I, you don't usually see them. You see one here, one there. And um, in the shop I was in, he must have had 20. So um, I went through them all. And the ones which were first printings in nice condition, I picked up because I don't have many of these. I've got maybe a dozen. And uh, most of mine are, um, are reprints. But to find so many, three for a fiver, I couldn't turn the ones that I picked up down. Because they, as I said, they're quite, quite early. So... Again, part of my sort of B format literary fiction. They're not really worth uh, a big load of money or anything like that at all. Um, in fact, I don't know any Virago modern classics that are worth like that are like collectible. But I do love the format of the books and uh, the actual titles are excellent. And these were quite early for Virago. 1983, this one. So these should clean up quite nicely when uh, we get the old brush and polish on them. They did actually start, there you go. So they did actually start numbering them at one point. Now this one's got a publisher's sticker on the back, which someone I think has had a little stab at trying to get off. And they've not done a particularly good job of it. In actual fact, it looks like it really is quite an awful sort of sticker. So do we have a go or not? That is the question, isn't it? Is it going to be really stubborn and mark the book? Or is it actually going to come off? And it's actually going to, that it's going to take the cover off. So sometimes you do get stickers that do that. So unfortunately, that's going to have to stay on there, which is a bit of a shame. But it is what it is. Look at this one, The Meaning of Trees. It's quite a big book as well, isn't it? Yeah, quite large for a Virago. This edition. But yeah, today, um, because I'm conscious of the time, I've got some other commitments outside of filming. Um, I'm uh, doing this in part. So this is everything that I've got up to this point in the month. But I am due a couple of other trips here and there. Um, so I'm going to just stay on top of it. And potentially I'll just do this. Uh, I'll film on different days until the month is done, basically. But uh I have got one more place to visit on Monday and I might find some books from there. And if I do, I'm going to add them to this video before I close it out. So hopefully I'll be back on uh, on Monday when I've been to that other bookshop and uh, I'll have a few more bits to show you, which might be a bit of a varied selection. We'll just have to see. But I thought, well, I'll do all these now while I've got a bit of time. There we are. So that's all my uh, 1981, that one. So that's all my Viragos done. Lovely, aren't they? They're really, really nice, those. Um, I want another odd Picador, which is a Jonathan Rabin. For love and money. That was uh, 1988, that one. I'm trying not to pick up any Picador post-2000, and I don't really want to pick up much post-1990, to be honest, but I'm picking them up if they're cheap and cheerful, you know? Right, the last little pile we've got for this section, before we start cleaning them, uh, brushing and polishing them, is another pile of penguins. Some were from my local bookshop, some were from, my, uh, from the order I had off uh, Drew the Penguin Chap. So this was a B-format one, which was from my local bookshop, which I did not have. So I was very, very pleased to get that. It's in nice condition. The big city. I generally, when I go into the bookshop, I generally check his early ones. So 
Uh, that was uh, one that I hadn't um, checked properly. Now this one once again was from the Penguin Chat, but it was a later Penguin, which comes in a dust wrapper. So underneath, it's absolutely fine. The dust wrapper itself is a little bit the worst for wear. I will give you that. So when I get to put this in my collection, I'll, I'll whip that dust wrapper off and put it in my box of dust wrappers. But the actual book underneath seems absolutely fine. Um, 450 pages, but Penguin decided to release it as a as what they would call a double volume and on some of their double volumes they put these very very thin dust wrappers on so these later dust wrappers aren't very robust and they don't tend to survive very well um is this yet yeah, 1949 they only did these sort of doubles for a couple of years sort of 48 to 50 really and then they they just knocked it on the head um but they did sort of up the game a little bit by making it a double volume with uh with a dust wrapper. So one of those little peculiarities of Penguin. But yeah, what I will probably do, well, that doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna take that off when I when I get to put this one on the shelf and I've got a box of dust wrappers and I'll pop it in there, you know? So I put that on now, of course, I need to take it off because I'm gonna be brushing the top edges so I don't want to damage it anymore. So I'm gonna pop that wrapper actually over there for now because that's going to need a brush in a minute. The one, that, the loved one, Evelyn Wall. Yeah, that's all right. I have thought of doing an Evelyn Wall and Penguin video, so maybe I'll do that quite soon. This is a reasonably early one, Penguin 125. It has got a crease on the back and it hasn't got a dust wrapper, but my own copy of it is much, much worse than this. It's one of my worst early ones, so I was pleased to, uh, to get this replaced. It's from 1938. This is an old one. There we are. I may actually have one in a wrapper. It's just that the book underneath is not that great. Um, I think this was from Drew. I can't remember, or it may have been from my local bookshop. I, I honestly, I can't remember, but um, it might have been one of my upgrade lists. And this looks like a really great, great copy, really, of uh, a scarce period in Penguin. This, um, yeah, like 1944. It's the one of the toughest years, and that seems fairly robust. I think, I think it must have been from Drew that one. I can't imagine I got it from my local shop. Um, the longer bodies, Gladys Mitchell. This one showing a little bit of frayed edge there, just the one page, just how it's been printed more than anything else. So not perfect, but still better than better than my own one for now. My name is Michael Sibley, one one six seven. Yeah, John, and this has got a slight slight roll on. Oh, look, that would be why. <laughs> I was going to say this has got a slight roll on it, and that would be why. So we're going to need to re-glue that one. Let's take this name out first of all. Right, I've got my uh, book binders glue, which you may have seen in a couple of other videos now. I'm using this one here. It's called Glue It Book Binding Glue, and it is excellent. So this one is going to cause more damage if I take it off completely. So it's really straightforward to do. The, the glue itself dries clear. So it dries completely clear. So it looks like it's a proper paperback bind, really, you know? And uh, all you do, you've got the thin spout there. You just need to uh, bring it along. Obviously, we're doing an entire spine, so it does take a little bit of time. It's not as quick as putting on Pritt stick. But it does squish out. So when we put the spine back on and squeeze it in, it's going to squish out and it will fill all the little areas. So... Uh, we have got good coverage on it. But yeah, I've used this on a few books now and it's proved to be excellent. So I recommend it. I always put a link to my cleaning supplies in the description down below. And this stuff is uh, worth worth your attention, I believe, you know. OK. 
Let's uh, square this up as best we can. Yeah, it has got that spiral. It's obviously been read a few times and it's caused the book to um it's caused the book to, to have a spine roll but generally speaking spine rolls can be sorted out over a period of time i've actually got a copy of the hobbit from last month still um, undergoing the treatment with the uh the bulldog clip at the moment and um it's looking very very good because of it you know it's pushed it back so what i'm doing is uh Getting it as square as I can, I'm pushing the uh, the spine in until it sets. I pushed a big blob of glue out the front there, out the top rather. The good thing is with this glue, it actually just sort of rubberizes in your hands. It's almost like taking off a bit of blue tack. So it's uh, very very clever stuff specifically designed for books. That's another bit coming out <laughs> as we squeeze in. It's getting closer and closer to the actual spine. You see, that's uh, why that's doing it. So it's looking all right. So when it dries, it sort of dries like rubber, if that makes sense, clear rubber. And that's really what a book bind looks like, doesn't it? When you have a paperback. Yeah, so it's pretty much done the trick, hasn't it? I said the thing about this copy is that it's it's not lying quite flat. There's a little bit of spine roll on it. So I'd be tempted once we've done, once you've given it clean, and this actually will have a, can have a little wipe on the polish as well. We just need the bulldog clip to keep it ever so like more sort of straight, more like we've got it there. Because at the moment it's got that ever so slight lean on it, which is what caused the, uh, the cover to come off in the first place. And then I think we'll have quite a nice, uh, quite a nice repair job there. I said where that's white, that will that will dry clear, and uh, you won't actually see it at all. But there we are. That's all right. That actually that's going to come up not too badly. Put the glue back over there. On your hands, you do get it does look like just like a little bit of rubber almost, you know. It just that's how it just dries. Right, the short weekend. And that's got a little bit of grubbiness around the logo there. So we'll take out the price first of all. A little 25p or something like that. Now let's see if this marks on the cover are going to come off. No, not with a rubber anyway. They may be something a bit more substantial, like a, a sticker rub or something like that. So it might be when they're polished. We might be able to make a little bit of headway on that. Um, another May Gray. Fifty-two. This one got an original owner's date inside. Probably when they bought it or when they last read it is, is usually the common thing that people put inside. Just come away. 
So I'm going to see if I can just squeeze in a little wedge of uh, little wedge of glue in there. Yeah, once again, it's going to squish out. It stuck it down. It was only a little bit, but it's the sort of thing that would get caught. I'll just push it down a bit more. There we are. That's fine. Running repairs. Running repairs. The big clock. Seven, two, eight. ATP on it. Another wood house. This is uh, one that I'm really pleased to get. It's uh, one of my favourite wood houses of all time. And uh, this edition, I think these editions are far better than the later ones with the pictures on the on the front. They just don't seem to fit in today's, like, you know, for me in today's aesthetic, shall we say? You know, but I suppose back then maybe there was something a bit a bit different, a bit more playful, maybe. But personally. I prefer these uh, these slightly plainer ones. They do me absolutely fine, personally. The yellow room. Mary Reinhardt. A little name inside but still okay i don't usually mind that too much on the whole it's a fairly robust copy of that one and the last one is he who whispers john dixon car good stuff so as of now that's all the books we've got so what i'm going to do I'm going to give these the brush and the polish now, so we're completely up to date, and hopefully I'm going to find some, some new books on Monday. Okay, so we're going to start with the B format ones, because the penguins themselves can't have too much polish on, whereas these ones, actually, we can, we can get away with it a bit more, because they've got completely glossy covers, and um, it gives the, uh, the duster itself a chance to uh, get sort of fully soaked in, so by the time we get to the penguins... We won't need to put actually that much polish on. It will just be a little bit of a, a once over more than anything else. So the picadors with their white covers, they do tend to pick up dirt and dust and grime and fingerprints all the time. So that they are a little pain in that respect, but at the same time, they're all right. And similar situation for these really, except the green of the Viragos does hide a multitude of sins in actual fact. So uh, I know we will be making inroads into these. Beautiful cover, that one. Don't know much about the book, so uh, these are these really short Viragos. A few there I'm definitely going to be giving a try to. A lot of them, I have to say, because they are classics, are books that I have historically read, or at least I know about the authors and what the books are about. But there is some other stuff on the list that I have no idea about and uh, will require a bit of investigation. It's a nice list. It's been around, um, I think, 50 years now, almost. At least 40, maybe about 45, something like that. But it's a, a long list. Um, 
and their early stuff I think is definitely worth grabbing if you if you come across it you know I really do think that I know it's not everyone's cup of tea and obviously they highlight women authors my favorite author of all in Virago is Elizabeth Taylor, not the actress, but the author. Fantastic, really, really like her books. So much so, I, I contemplate collecting them in um, hardback first edition. And they do occasionally turn up, but they're, they're always, every single book is like a few hundred quid. So I thought, perhaps not. Um, I don't love her that much, but they, the, the actual books themselves are gorgeous. The first editions, really nice covers on them and that. But yeah. Few and far between and expensive when they do turn up. So I thought, now perhaps just stick to the paperbacks, uh, of which they all came out in Virago, although I, and I've got them all, but I've only got two or three of them as firsts. And there was none in this little hall, sadly, because I checked. That's the dash you'll have it. Which is just a really good one to have. A great author. I said, not first printing, this one. It is. It was just too good to turn down when it was three for a fiver. So it's a great, great reading copy in Picador. So I think one more read of this and it may well be, uh, be have to be put out of its misery, I think, however carefully it's read. But yeah, so really nice. So those little books we've just done, look at the muck that's come off those. <laughs> now we'll just do that copy of Vietnam. which, as I said, I've got it, but it's a good improver on the one that I've got, and I'll probably keep the one I've got, because I'm a bit of a fan of photography books uh, of this era. So, yeah, as expected, that's come up absolutely beautiful, that one. That is, that's really nice. So that one's all done, because we'd already brushed the edges of those. We hadn't brushed the top edges of these B formats, so we'll do that now. This one can be done on its own. Yeah, I don't think I've ever picked up six Virago in a hit before ever. They're really weighty. I've got to say the books themselves are very well made. But like Picador, they just don't turn out very often. Not in first print and not in great condition. It's just how they are. Right, so that's all them done, which is good news. So we'll now move on to the penguins. Now what I think we'll do, we've got one odd B format, so that might as well be done on its own. And I will just give it a wipe as well. Quite good, this is uh, Ronald Searle, who I do really like. This is one of those, must be a fairly obscure art book, because I was pretty much convinced I had all of the Penguin B format art books, and then this one comes along, so... Uh, I am missing between numbers 1001 and 3200 odd. I'm missing about 1200 main series penguin books and I've just started to put a focus on collecting the missing ones. Um, so we'll see how we get on with that. Um, but yeah, they're sort of uh, on the agenda to have a little look at next because uh, the collection is moving along swiftly and uh, I have some long-term plans where I put some stuff in storage that's now all been dealt with and processed so that I can uh, carry on collecting as it were you know so, so I'm going to give these all a, a wipe first of all obviously um, a brush rather obviously a lot of these can't be wiped at all if they've got matte covers So the early ones uh, need to be careful of. <sighs> and 
this has got that cherry tree in the middle here. And another early-ish penguin. The mucky part of the job, as we know. Now, the last thing I need to do with these is just give them the once over with my uh, with my cloth. Now, some of these can have a little bit of attention. Others, we just I just can't touch them, really. So there were just a few, weren't there, that had little marks and things on the so. Just going to sense check these. They are going into the main collection. Very nice copy of that Hemingway. Very pleased with that one. Slightly laminated cover, so that can have a, a wipe. They're generally all right, so they, I would consider those all as good as I'm going to be able to get them. And we've got this last pile here, so they're just just giving them the extra little level of uh, scrutiny. I said some of them we just we just can't touch them because of their their age. They can't get them wet. Definitely not this one. <laughs> Look at that advert on the back. Bovril Cook's Trump Card. <laughs> this one's fine. Yeah, actually excellent condition for a new English library. Much, much better than uh, is normal. Worth a, worth a pound of anyone's money, that. It's fine. A little bit grubby on the back, but...
This is the one we repaired with the spine roll. Not looking too bad now. Turned on the back. Okay, nice copy of that. So there's something on the front there, which we managed to get off. Something a bit chalky. these to be as clean as possible um, obviously And how a second look over these is, is just taking off little bits of dirt and stuff that have attached themselves to the cover. It's amazing. And the last one. So fingers crossed, the next scene you see will be some new pickups that I've managed to find, which I'll tell you all about. Oh, look at this. Which I will tell you all about in a moment. Or I'll be back to say, oh, it was a complete washout. I didn't pick up any books. And that, for now, is it. But fingers crossed I'll be able to find some. There. Okay, so back from my trip. And uh, I did, in the end, manage to pick up a few books from Jack Ryder down in Liscard. So when I went uh, and visited about a month or so ago, um, Jack mentioned that he had a lockup where he had quite a few boxes, about 20 boxes, in fact, full of paperbacks that he didn't really have room for in the shop. And uh, would I like to arrange to go out and have a look? And well, that was this morning. So uh, I did manage, as I said, to pick up 17 books, which we'll go through today. We'll give them all a bit of a clean. Uh, nothing too spectacular, but it was worth the trip, shall we say. Um, one of the, the best things I found, and I did point this out to Jack, um, because in amongst all his bits and pieces was a first edition of John Wyndham's The Crack and Wakes in hardback. Um, but it was without a dust wrapper, which is the same condition that mine one is in. And, um, you know, we said, well, yeah, best to get that one up onto, uh, onto eBay <laughs> or somewhere somewhere. I know he does list online. So uh, he was grateful for that little find. But uh, the rest of it was, um, well, a bit of a mixture, really. Not a lot of vintage paperback wise, um, because that's just not what was getting handed into him in the shop. Um, but he does specialise in military history. That's his thing. So there are a couple of uh, military titles here. Uh, so that was a fairly nice old arrow on the Desert Rats. This is uh, a nice 60s uh, penguin, uh, John P. J.P. Donnelly. I've got the Ginger Man, um, but I haven't got Meet My Maker, the Mad Molecule. Look at that. Um, it was in pretty nice condition. It's very similar to the... Um, uh, the uh, Ginger Man, and also got the cover by Alan Aldridge, who I particularly like. So this was on two wants lists, A, my main Penguin series, but also uh, it was on my Alan Aldridge wants list as well. So yeah, 1967, right from the uh, that classic Summer of Love. 
or the year of, of love, I should say, 1967. But yeah, nice little period. It will certainly do it. Um, it's not a bad copy, though. It's got an unbroken spine. A little bit of wear around the uh, the edges, but not too bad. Um, this one, I, in all honesty, I was picking a few up just simply to say I've got a few, even if they end up being um, a few duplicates. Um, I didn't really mind. So this was a first of this one. I haven't actually checked to see I've got it, but I'm pretty sure I have. It's that Penguin Poetry series with these beautiful sort of uh jackets here they're really really nice and i am absolutely certain i've got the first printing of that and that one is the first so it's not going to hurt to have a double um an odd movie tie into deliverance i don't really remember um seeing this one in movie tie-in form and uh i particularly like 1970s sort of edgy movie tie-ins she has people you know, straw dogs and the godfather and you know it's just from that period really um it's not a fresh printing but movie times generally or rather often aren't in actual fact you know so i don't mind that too much this is quite a nice find out in the wild as it were i wonder the dennis wheatley library of the occult this is moonchild by alistair crowley now it's got a faded spine but even so these are quite quite sought after and uh, this is volume three in the dennis wheatley library of the occult so i didn't bother checking what printing it was or anything like that simply because i just wanted to uh grab it this is the first one i've been able to find in this series and it is first published 72 this is the reprint from march 1974 whether that was the first time it was put into the uh dennis wheatley library i don't know now uh this one um once again i have already got a first printing of it this one is a reprint uh has a slightly faded spine but it's one of the more collectible penguin modern poets uh, titles um you can see it's the Mersey Sound and uh, really, really funky, funky design on the cover there. Once again, uh, Alan Spain did that particular jacket. As I said, this one is a reprint, but it's a, it is a collectible uh, poetry title, one of the most collectible of all. Um, this one, I didn't check my list. Um, I picked it up because it was, a, well, it was a puffin first on reflection. He is a little bit hammered, isn't he? But if I haven't got it, I'll pick it up. I suspect this one might be quite scarce, but look at the state of it. I think that's a little bit too far gone for me that time around. Um, so, yes, I'm going to check my list right now. I should be straight back. Well, thankfully, I do actually own 176, so I have already got a copy of that. My fault, really, for not taking the time to have a proper look. So I'm not actually even going to clean that one. That one is going to go to the charity shop, see if they want it. Um, an odd peregrine well i've only got maybe three or four peregrine it's not a title i ever ever pick up or ever go out to look for this is number 58 um yeah they don't tend to turn up very often and when they do you know the subjects are so dry really in a lot of cases but it's a first print from 1966 and uh, if you're a penguin collector you really ought to um you know keep these on your radar which is what i do but they're just not not that big a deal for me really but since i was buying this job lot basically i was saving these books from going to the tip pretty much um so i thought well i might as well pick that one up um as i said um jack is is known for his uh, military history that's his specialty i've got a couple in the forgotten voices series but i've not got this one which is the blitz and the battle of britain so i picked this one up solely to read it's not part of any sort of collection with the fact that um, as i said i've got a couple in the series already and they're very very good they're like first person recollections of uh, particular instances and uh, yeah i'll just give that a little wipe off and that'll be absolutely fine um this is quite nice this is over our dead bodies women against the bomb this is a virago and it's a virago non-fiction um so something i was not aware they even did as you know if, um well have you seen in this video uh, earlier on we uh um, i have been getting into virago as an imprint and uh, one that i am it's on my radar, shall we say, in first printing. And this is a first from 1983. And it was a Virago original. So that's a, a PBO. Um, I remember selling this one, actually. This is the River Cottage Book on Bread. Um, really, really great book. There was loads of cookery books there. And um, I actually enjoy cooking uh, bread. And uh, this was a really great series. So uh, I picked that one up rather than leave it behind. Um, an early New English Library. Look at this. The Hangover Cookbook. It's uh, an unusual format, this square here. And uh, 
It's fairly early, I think. We'll check the pub date in a minute. Jack and Jill Smedley. Yeah, the first Nell edition, 1970. I would imagine that that's probably quite a scarce Nell, Nell paperback, that one. Probably. And uh, although it's completely uh, faded spine, it was too good to leave behind. Unusual ones like that. You, know, you don't always see those. Um, another odd uh, Virago. Really, really weird, this one. Uh, Virago Upstart. And it's a book on ecology, and it looks like it's designed for youngsters. The Young Person's Guide to Saving the Planet. Look at that. And that's really the Virago sort of um, mentality, really, isn't it? 1990. Now, I noticed there was a bit of pencil in this one. Let's just go back again. Yeah, a bit too much to be, to be worried about... Um, uh, rubbing that out right now, but yeah. Now this one, um, I suspect I have actually got it, but it was a nice copy, and it was once again too good to turn down. It's Norman Mailer, and it is also um, the uh, first Virago printing of this one, the Picador, rather Picador printing, 1984. Yeah, look at that, 295 when this one came out. Um, I'm sure I've got one, but it's not in this nice condition. This is a uh, pretty good for such a large book. And um, I like Norman Mailer, actually. A um, couple of slightly larger format books to finish off. This is one on Toulouse-Lautrec. Um, great, great artist. I have a, a book on Toulouse-Lautrec. It's a Tashin, but this one's got a bit more uh, behind the scenes. So, uh, yeah, I think that's quite interesting. There's a few art books there. So that was all right. Quite a nice vintage ish book that one thames and hudson 1964 reprinted 1968 that one then we got two large format books this one is a pan i think i'm just going to pull the camera out a tad more there we are that should just be in there. this is a yeah a pan book on arthur rackham quite nice Nice artist. These great illustrations, aren't they? So I have a little shelf or two of art books, large format, and uh, this is going to join that one once it's had a bit of a clean. So that was quite nice. And one other, which was a Tasham, um, which I do collect, like to collect Tasham. This is one of their slightly earlier ones, I think. They're never very expensive. You know, they were sold as a cheap way to access art. This one's even bigger than the Rackham, so it only just fits in, but once again, great, great artwork. And if we have a look, this one was published in 1992, so reasonably early for Tashin. In, actual, in fact, it does say Benedict Tashin, which is a, um, a sign of the earlier ones when they say Benedict Tashin. So that's what I picked up from Jack Ryder, which wasn't bad at all, I didn't think, at that little haul. Um, so I'm going to... Um, Give them all a brush down and give them a final polish. Okay, so let's give these bigger ones the brush off first of all. And we'll uh, spray the uh, books and get them clean straight off the bat. Let's find a clean bit of cloth for this little lot. Yeah, so uh, these were just in a locker right out in the country. It's uh, not somewhere where you'd ever think that there would be books. And uh, says it wasn't open to the public. He just uh, wanted uh, me to cast my eye over them before I think they were heading off to the, the tip. You're we going to have one last look through, see what he could take up to his shop. And uh, then they were off to the tip, I think, or to the uh, the Goodwill Donation Center, I think he said in actual fact. So there was, uh, so there must have been 20, 20 boxes to go through, I reckon.
There we are. Yeah, quite a nice pool. I should look forward to having a look through that. I do like Arthur Rack. Right. These ones here sort of need uh, cleaning on a one by one basis, don't they? The World of Art Library. This is quite a nice series, actually. There is a really nice series that um, I've got a few of, but they hardly ever turn up. It's the Fontana uh, Art Series, Fontana History of Art. Beautiful little books that just don't seem to be around. And I've struggled to make my own sort of list of what was actually published. But I have tried, and I think I've got a definitive list, but it's uh, tricky. And there's such little nondescript books that I think people don't think anyone would really want them, unfortunately. I'm hoping that that polish is going to get the rest of this sticker off. It's definitely loosened it, but quite stubborn as anything, this. So no is the short answer, so we're going to spray that on. I'm going to stick it over there and leave it for a while. Right. Some of these B formats done. Because we don't know how long they've been there for. But some of these, I think, I suspect, have been in that lockup for quite some time. Now, some of these obviously cannot be polished, like that one, for example, has got a matte cover. That, however, that 60s one is absolutely fine. So we're gonna give that a, a zap. As I said, apart from a little bit of edgeware, a really nice spine on it. So that's good. Fifties, fifties. When I don't have much in the in Arrow, but I don't mind them. But they're not my top publisher. But a few titles that they published are actually quite quite good. And uh, this is when I wanted to explore a bit more. I got most of that dirt off the top top corner there. <laughs> Tidier. 
Oh yeah, duster's already got quite a bit dirty. These books were in a bit of a state. They come from a very dusty and uh, sort of mouldy old environment. As I said, I don't know how long some of them have been stuck there. My suspicion is quite some time, but I said I've saved them from oblivion before they've gone off to uh, recycling. perfect but it's a movie tie-in I don't think I've ever seen it's not one I've looked for but it's not one I've, I've also seen so uh, from that point of view alone it's probably worth worth grabbing this is a typical New English Library tie wasn't it Anything that was a bit wrong, like getting drunk, for example, or waking up with a hangover, that was something that New English Library would like to address. That's got a bit of an odd format, so I need to be careful with that. Lay it flat somewhere so that the uh, back cover sorts itself out. Certainly making a bit of a mess of my duster today, but that's okay. It's all in a good cause, isn't it? This is another one that's going to need a bit of flattening, but it will be worth it. I said, I don't have many cookbooks, but this was a good one. And this one will also be going in my chubby red part. Harkens back to the days of the popular B format military history tile. I don't know if it's still quite as big as it was, but certainly it's uh, certainly a market. Sadly, he didn't have. Uh, I do collect Anthony Beaver, the military historian, and he um, any stock of that that Jack Ryder had were uh, had already gone into his shop, so he didn't have any of that there. Um, but he had quite a bit in paperback. But I am holding out for the hardbacks on those. Here's that odd peregrine. I say you don't really see peregrines much. I've got a few, and it's not a title I really am trying to trick that, uh, tr track them all down or anything, but it is part of the penguin story, so theoretically I should, when they're cheap, be picking them up. So they've got a, a few examples, but not many. Yeah, never heard of this for I'll go up start. It may be very, very scarce. Who knows? I'm pleased with this one. Virago non fiction.
sure this is a real improver on the copy that I've got already of this one. That's come up really nice, that one. Now we're back to uh, toulouse Lautrec, and uh, we'll just see. Yeah, there we are. By leaving that polish on for about, what, five minutes or so, it's uh, squished it all out. It's all gone a mush. So I've got some kitchen towel here, which I use in cases like this. There we are. Let's just get that off. Now we can give it a, uh, a a further polish, which will just finish it off now. And we're all good. Lovely. So there you go. So if you have enjoyed this month's pickups, which weren't as bad as some months. However, next month, well, with a bit of luck, it could be absolutely bananas. In, in which case, uh, I won't be doing any pickups for the next year, probably. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, if you've enjoyed today's video, do please give it that thumbs up. Um, do please hit the subscribe button if you've not already. Lots of people watch the channel, but not everyone subscribes. If you've not, it costs nothing. It does help to keep the lights on. So do hit that subscribe button and I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon with another video. Bye.